particular, this is particularly true of generals, that you find some, see some senior officers who are good at changing events in the art. Then in the World War II context, George Patton would be a good example. Douglas MacArthur, love him or hate him, could, would change events. Guderian, in his day, in 1940, was good at it. On the other hand, you find first-rate generals who are able to play well the cards they're dealt. And I think a very good example of that is Dwight Eisenhower. For, again, this is a, one of America's great generals. You never could say that he worked to change the situation, to change it from within, change it as he found it. And so the tendency is for we historians to judge the movers and shakers. We judge the movers and shakers. We even like General Custer. You know, there's something, there's something attractive, there's something attractive about it. And the other individuals seem dull, slow, conventional. And yet you can make a good case that modern war, particularly World War II, because the communications really hadn't caught up with the technology yet. World War II was in many ways a war of, I hate to use the word in your context, but it was a war of management. It was a war of, it was a war of control. And so as I say, you'll find different, different characters in, at every level of command, but this is particularly true once you get up into the higher levels of corps and army.